15 degrees outside in Morgantown, West Virginia. But inside the WVU Coliseum, things heating up as two of the best head coaches, Jamie Dixon and Bob Huggins in the Big 12 with the gold carpet rolled out, square off, Big 12 basketball coming up next. We begin a Saturday full of basketball here on ESPNU with TCU and West Virginia, a battle of 12 and two teams. Great to have you with us, everybody. I'm Drew Felios alongside Reed Geddes. The Mountaineers with that frantic style of play. They call it Press Virginia. We'll try and fend off the Horn Frogs here today. If you have never played against West Virginia, it's very hard to prepare. They make you uncomfortable in everything you try to do, whether you're talking about getting the ball in bounds, just trying to set up your offense. They're number one in the country in turnovers forced, turnover margin, and number one in steals, and they come at you in waves. So the Horn Frogs gonna have to handle it today. Reed, Jalen Fisher, and Alex Robinson will have to be solid. Arguably the most talented backcourt ever in TCU history. These two kids can really play basketball. Jamie Dixon will say, remember, you're talking about a freshman and a sophomore. He has no idea, he's optimistic, has no idea how they're gonna respond to this pressure they're gonna see in West Virginia. We take a look at the starting lineups. TCU also getting good production out of their front court. Vladimir Bronzianski went off for 28 against Kansas. WVU going to try and clamp down on him. And for West Virginia, Ahmad is the leading scorer. But at only 12 points a game, they really don't have a high, high man. Yeah, you can say that about both teams, really, Drew, because nobody in this game averages more than about 12 points per game. A lot of depth, a lot of balance on both sides of the court. Big 12 home opener for the Mountaineers of West Virginia. You can feel it inside the Coliseum. And we're underway. Jalen Fisher handling for the Horn Frogs, coming off a three-point win over Oklahoma just this past Tuesday. Now just immediately, you see how hard it is just to make it a pass to initiate your offensive set in the half court. First shot missed by Williams. Meanwhile, West Virginia they were in a battle with Texas Tech on Tuesday night. Lost that game in overtime by one. Well, Nathan Adrian with the ball hit a huge three-pointer to put that game into overtime, and they really dug themselves out of a hole to put that game into extra minutes. So Bob Huggins' team, a little bit road-weary. They started with two straight on the road in conference play. Coach Huggins has tried to keep his guys rested this week. They took all of Wednesday off, and... He says they should not have a problem today, stamina-wise. Uh, he just discounts it. He says, hey, we practice hard, we're going to play hard. And, well, you see Kenrich Williams taking it to the back end of the press. And, Drew, that's what Texas Tech did so well against the Mountaineers, attack that press on the back end. So before that loss to Texas Tech, the Mountaineers had won eight straight, including big wins over Oklahoma State and Virginia on the road. West Virginia really stagnant offensively. Everybody just kind of standing looking at each other. Miles Jr., the fadeaway, gets it to go, and the Mountaineers on the board. Uh, that is very unusual start offensively for West Virginia. You see a lot of those cuts and screens and curls at the elbow, a lot of stagnation to start this game. That one blocked out of bounds. Meanwhile, Jamie Dixon, first game at West Virginia as the head coach at TCU in his first season came home to his alma mater after 13 great years at Pitt and he's had a lot of success against these Mountaineers 12 and 7 all time. Now, last time he faced a Bob Huggins team was 2012 when Pitt won that game but remember this is a complete stylistically a completely different animal than Jamie Dixon saw when he was the coach at Pittsburgh. Here's Jalen Fisher the talented freshman trying to take it inside the lane and was fouled. Jamie Fisher is off to a great start and a great matchup with Javon Carter. And this is the pressure. You're not ever going to go somewhere easily. There's going to be arms and bodies reaching the entire time. And Jalen Fisher is going to have to take care of the ball if the Horn Frogs are going to have a chance. Nice 
nice rotation. And traveling called on J.D. Miller, the sophomore from Dallas, Texas. They're getting a little bit more from him than they thought at the beginning of the year. Well, J.D. Miller's a, just a bundle of talent, six foot eight inches. He's a very good defensive player, still trying to figure things out offensively. But what he can do that surprised Jamie Dixon, an excellent passer, very much like Nathan Adrian, who he's matched up with right now. Inside, Ahmad posting up, goes to the left hand. That's a pretty move. Oh, really nice. Looked at the defense over his left shoulder and then drop stepped over his right. Well, as soon as you take the court against the Mountaineers, the defense automatically hits you right in the face. As TCU getting a mouthful here. Bratzianski, though, the follow. Well, as far as game plans go, you've seen TCU doing what Texas Tech has success to. You can't allow them to press you for free. When you break the pressure, you got to take it all the way through to the basket. Ahmad's got that good face-up game, and he's got the jumper going here early. We'll talk about versatility. We see him on the right block and then comes back at about 18 feet and uh, off to a great start for West Virginia. Too many steps. Traveling called on Fisher. Now, Ahmad, watch him look over his left shoulder at the defensive player. Catches it, looks left, checks the defense, comes back over the right, and beautiful and here's the versatility you got to respect his jump shot he's right-handed that jump hook was with his left and oh, he is really off to a great start this season Ahmad only averaging 12 points a game but Reed is he going to have to up his point production for West Virginia to be successful in the month of March? Uh, you know, I don't think so. He's the likely candidate. If you wanted a go-to guy, it would be Javon Carter or Ahmed. But I don't think so. I mean, the style that West Virginia is playing, they want six or seven guys all averaging between 10 and 12 points per game. Running now, here's Robinson. Tried the reverse layup, and he'll be fouled. Alex Robinson going to go to the line. Jamie Dixon pleased with the way his team has started against this pressure. And again, if you, do, if you don't take it through the back end, then you're allowing them to press you for free. And if you do that, boy, you are really playing the game West Virginia wants you to play. That foul called on Daxter Miles Jr. You know, it's interesting, Reed. TCU has never beaten West Virginia, 0-9 all time. But when we talked to Jamie Dixon yesterday, he immediately told us, I have. I know what it takes to beat these guys. Well, you know, and you're talking about Jalen Fish and Alex Robinson, who have never played West Virginia. And then really, if you remember last year, TCU almost won the game when they played here in West Virginia last year. So even the returning players are not intimidated. 6-3 here early. Jamie Dixon will mix up his defense as man-to-man now in a 2-3 zone. That pass nearly intercepted. Only three seconds to shoot now. Well, the ball stayed at the free throw line, extended up, never got the ball down to the short corner or in the paint. Perhaps not as prepared for the 2-3 zone look. Sound. Switching to a man. Now Nears got to get it up in a hurry. It's Miles Jr. Can't get it to fall, but they come away with the offensive rebound. Here's a man. And we're going to wave this one off. Going to be on the floor. Yeah, a really nice find by Nathan Adrian. An outstanding passer from the power forward position. Had the ball, up fakes it, but he's looking the whole time. And man, Bob Huggins talks about what a good passer Nathan Adrian says. I wish sometimes he could. Pass the ball to himself. A uh, good find down the baseline. Substitutions come in for the first time. Desmond Bain enters the game for TCU. Williams will have a seat. Also, Sakaba Konate, very active in that Texas set game. Yeah, that was a freedom of movement foul against Alex Robinson. You see them all piled up in the middle. and. Now the officials are going to call that. You're not going to be able to chuck cutters and keep them from going where they want. TCU team's definitely going to have a different attitude coming in here today. And another foul is going to be called. Lots of whistles here in the opening minutes. 
You're around Jamie Dixon for about 30 seconds, and you realize the enormous culture change that's already taken place in Fort Worth. You go to their practices, they're upbeat, they're fun, they're positive, high energy level, a completely different feel from when you'd walk into Fort Worth last year. And Coach Dixon saying, everything feels new. My team feels new, the town feels new, <laughs> the arena everything about our program and we've got all the pieces in place and we're not trying to win in the long haul we're trying to win right now when interesting words about everything feeling new for a guy who ultimately is coming home right <laughs> well look at the pressure west virginia they will press you off made free throws they'll press you off missed free throws it is relentless there's williams the extra steps and credit once again the west virginia pressure 7-3 early here in Morgantown. ESPN's 7th ranked West Virginia 7-3 lead over TCU. Drew Felios, Reed Geddes. Take a look at the Big 12 standings so far and look at the overall records, especially for TCU at 12-2. I think the question is, can they maintain this level of play now that they're in conference? I think the answer to that, the short answer is yes, they can. And they expect to finish in the top half. And you look at the standings and I guess two things, Drew, jump out at me. You see Baylor up top and Texas down lower than we thought. But if Baylor wins today, then Monday we can expect for the fourth time in the history of the Big 12 having the number one and number two teams in the country. Mm. Mountaineers with a four-point lead. Top of the key, here's Miles Jr. That rattles in and out, but Kanate with the offensive board and put back. A strong rebound inside by Kanate. And this kid can play. He's a big, strong kid. And against Oklahoma State, he put up 12 points in just 13 minutes. One for five so far from the floor for the Horned Frogs. Dangerous pass. Ball comes over a little lazy, but a travel. So clearly, TCU a little bit shaken by this pressure from the Mountaineers. Yeah, that's two turnovers by Michael Williams and bad turnovers. Not really a lot of pressure on him, but he's just playing faster than he wants to. And already four turnovers for the Horn Frogs. Yeah, TCU's turnovers have gone up over the last couple games. And Kansas and Oklahoma game 15 against Kansas 16 against OU coach Dixon said throughout the week just have to take care of it better especially today but the Mountaineers have a turnover of their own Michael Williams right down the pipe and he's going to get the roll now, first time that he didn't do anything but penetrate until somebody stopped him and nobody got in front of Michael Williams that time what is the key, Reed, to breaking a press like this where they come up and trap you at half court? I really feel like once you get the pressure release, once you break the initial trap, by definition, you've got an advantage. You've got numbers. And a lot of times you go, well, we don't want to play fast. Well, if you don't attack when you have numbers, then you aren't penalizing the team. And boy, you fall into a trap. And so I think even if you don't want to play fast, when you have numbers and you break the initial pressure, go all the way through. Miles Jr. missed that last shot. Now like TCU that. attacking again. And that's going to be a goaltending. Count the bucket for Shepard. Michael Williams, the last two times he got the ball, he hesitated. This time he just penetrated until somebody stopped him. And Kanate never got outside the restricted arc. Didn't stop him soon enough. Michael Williams, senior out of San Antonio. Only six foot two. A chance at playing time here today. Here's Ahmad. That's his third field goal. Turning the tables a little bit, pressing a pressing team, and more West Virginia just went right through it and ooh, got away with a travel. Pressure really heating up. Williams to the corner. Robinson kicks it out. Bain was waiting for it. Nathan Adrian down there in the short corner. 
Out of bounds to the Horn Frogs. TCU right now three of eight from the floor. West Virginia five for ten. As Lamont West checks into the game for the Mountaineers. Alex Williams goes to the bench for TCU. Full day of basketball here on ESPNU. We got some good ones coming up. Oh, Illinois. Indiana game is going to be good. And boy, we got six games all day. You can sit inside on your sofa and watch good college basketball. Looking forward to that Cincinnati University of Houston game later this evening. Ah, going to be fun. Fisher kicks it out. This is Parrish. Three pointer on the way. In and out. Fisher with the long rebound. They got numbers from the right side. That ball blocked. Well, Williams going to get a chance at some free throws here. Talked about that great lineup today on ESPNU. Just sit back and enjoy Clemson, Notre Dame, Illinois, Indiana, Vanderbilt, Alabama, and that Cincinnati Houston game, and then the nightcap San Diego and Boise State. Kelvin Sampson off to a good start at my alma mater, Houston. Got a great opportunity to play a ranked team. Leading scorer, Rob Gray, battling the flu. And without him, boy, they're going to have their hands full with Nick Cronin's Cincinnati Bearcats. So this is Michael Williams at the line. TCU going to need a good performance from their bench here today because you know West Virginia is going to get that from their reserves. I, I've got a theory against West Virginia. If, if your point guard and your shooting guard don't handle the pressure, you don't stand a chance. I really think the game comes down to your three and four and then also your six man. So how your small forward, power forward handle the pressure. And then can you bring guys off the bench that can handle the pressure? Spotting up in the corner. Here's West. Can't hit. Shepard, nice pass underneath and the finish. That's Brandon Parrish, and we are knotted at 11. Look, Kavar Shepard, the last two weeks, has just become a different player. Was so good the other night against Oklahoma. A great job handling the pressure at the elbow. That is a great pass from a big man. And a traveling call. So TCU with some pressure defense of their own. Well, TCU handling the pressure. They've had a lot of turnovers, but when they've broken the pressure, they've attacked Kavar Shepard, big man, finding someone on the baseline. And we're all knotted up in West Virginia. Getting right now. That they are. I wish I had them just so I could sell them. <laughs> All tied at 11 here inside the WVU Coliseum. Drew Felios, Reed Geddes, great to have you with us on this Saturday afternoon. Tough pass that time from Fisher, and nobody was home. Yeah, just a wild pass. That's now five turnovers for TCU, and you know, Jamie Dixon's a little concerned. You know, the guys off the bench have done a good job. Eight of the 11 points for TCU have come from bench players. Well, West Virginia needs to get that ball down on the baseline in that short corner. Now from the elbow, Adrian trapped. Miles was open. And a three-pointer good by Daxter Miles Jr. He's shooting 47% behind the line this year, Daxter Miles. Miles Jr. had 22 points at Oklahoma State. Preseason honorable mention in the Big 12. Alex Robinson now going to come in. Michael Williams will take a seat on the bench. I watch West Virginia play, and, and, and I already have this enormous amount of respect for Bob Huggins. But the ability to get kids to buy in and play this hard the entire basketball game is remarkable coaching. Good pass. Slam dunk. With authority by Shepard, Kavar Shepard playing pretty good basketball here in the first half. And Brandon Parrish doing a nice job of dribbling until there's pressure and then jump stopping and maintaining his balance. 
So far, the Horned Frogs hanging in from the baseline right back at you. And that's Miles Jr. He's only 6'3". He's not supposed to do that. Well, what a rebound. Man, nobody put a body on Daxter Miles, and he came in looking like a power forward. Tremendous athleticism. Now three-pointer back. Robinson couldn't get it to fall. Offensive board. Parrish, the tough stick back. Brandon Parrish has been really good off the bench for Jamie Dixon. This is a kid that started every game last year, and he's really a sharpshooter, has bought into this role of being the sixth man. How about Daxter Miles? Oh, I mean, look where he watch to the left of your screen, just comes in from nowhere. And, man, that's strong. Entry pass. Tried to catch the defense napping, but the ball doesn't go in. Parrish right there for the board. Robinson going to try and take it to the hole. Couldn't get it to go. Miles Jr., another rebound. It's part of the battle against this Mountaineers team, surviving those opening minutes when that pressure just hits you. Yeah, there's no question. It, it, and it comes in waves. You know, it's a relentless pressure, but one turnover is kind of contagious and leads to two or three. And you know, right now, West Virginia heating up behind the three-point line. 11 points right now for Daxter Miles Jr. Four of six shooting. Fisher has Adrian all over him. Jalen Fisher only 6'2", Adrian 6'9", guarding. Here's Jalen Fisher trying to get on the board, and the freshman rings one up. Yeah, has not shot the ball extremely well behind the three-point line, right at about 31%, but Jalen Fisher gets to where he consistently knocks down that shot, and well, he becomes really difficult to defend. Trying to go for another one. This one, though, comes up short. May have been deflected by Robinson that time. Well, that was a heat check. That's what Daxter Miles is saying, saying that ball was deflected. I didn't miss that by a foot. <laughs> J.D. Miller. Miles will get a break. So Daxter Miles Jr. already over his average. Five different Mountaineers average between 10 and 12 and a half points. Those are the kind of turnovers that will just kill you. It's one thing if you're trapped, but when you're just picking up the ball and you shuffle your feet, it'll really frustrate Jamie Dixon. What the Mountaineers try and do, get guys handling the ball that shouldn't be handling it. Good look. That's excellent. Breaking down of the defense. And Mountaineers able to score again with Watkins. And that's what I keep talking about. When you're attacking the 2-3 zone, well, you want to get the ball to the elbow into the short corner and make that defense shift. Another turnover. Fisher looked like he dribbled off his foot that time. Tell you what, this West Virginia crowd, they are unique too, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it fits in perfect to this frenetic style, and it's a cumulative effect on you. You know, you think you you, you weathered the storm, and all of a sudden you look up and you got seven turnovers, and you just still got eight minutes to go in the first half. Yeah, 15 degrees, the temperature outside. They were eager to get in here. I had Nebraska a couple weeks ago. It was one degree in Lincoln, and... Didn't have a big showing for that game, but here today, the fans eager for basketball. Robinson trapped at half court, just had it taken away, and commits the foul as Ahmad tried to break away. Well, let me tell you where you don't want to go. You don't want to dribble across half court and then run to the corner and kill your dribble because a double team becomes like a quadruple team. And Boy, you got the half court and the mid court stripe. And if you're Alex Robinson, oh, that is not where you want to be on the floor. West Virginia really putting the pressure on the Horn Frogs. Three point game in Morgantown. 
TCU, though, with eight turnovers so far. And, Reed, they need a little bit more of this. Let's look at their press break when it did work. A dangerous inbound pass, but then watch how poised they are in traps. When double teams come, they back up, they don't panic, and then watch Brandon Parrish at the end of this. He dribbles to pressure, jump stops, does not try to over-penetrate, and makes the easy pass, and then finishes strong. And then contrast that with when they get in trouble, and then suddenly you're panicked, you see things are all out of sorts, and boy, suddenly it, it's constant. And so you're Jalen Fisher, and against another team, you think, oh, the pressure has cleared. Bob Huggins' pressure, it never clears. It's always coming. When you cross half court, if you haven't already been trapped, you're going to be in. Well, already eight turnovers. And for Jamie Dixon, the concern is only two steals. And so you don't want to say they're not forced turnovers because everything's forced by West Virginia. But, well, pressure really taking its effect right now in TCU. Mountaineers go inside. And nice lay in. And Adrian's going to go to the line to complete the three-point play. Nathan Adrian with his first points. Well, a strong power dribble inside by Nathan Adrian. Watch how low he gets. Takes that ball all the way down to the floor. And if you're a big guy and you're going to dribble, you better be going somewhere. And Nathan Adrian was. Adrian, the most experienced Mountaineer. Averaging 10.6 boards per contest. Six-point game. A lot of ball handling from Fisher finally gets it up court. Adrian once again really harassing the young freshman right now. Fisher going to deal with the corner and had it intercepted. Nathan Adrian doing a great job on Jalen Fisher. Almost an extra step that time, but all the way to the goal, Tariq Phillip. Well, you would think Jalen Fisher could take it. Nathan Adrian off of the dribble, but every time that Adrian has extended the pressure, it has resulted in a turnover by Jalen Fisher. Watch it again. This is six foot eight inch, six foot nine inch power forward out defending an outstanding point guard. Watch the pressure extend out. Nathan Adrian takes him all the way out of back dribble. And look, he just keeps that pressure on him. And uh, Jalen Fisher really struggling with pressure with just making a simple pass. Well, that's good. I, you know, I look at that matchup and I think spread the floor out and take him off the dribble and just have not been able to. And then what West Virginia does so good is changing turnovers into points. You saw the run by Phillip also end to end. The first six games for West Virginia now coming off the bench. And all of a sudden, it's a 7-0 run for the Mountaineers. TCU's got to be careful here. Foul committed by Ahmad. Well, first take is now on ESPN, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. Eastern to noon. Stephen A., Max, and Molly discussing and debating the most compelling and entertaining topics from the world of sports on ESPN. Also, streaming live on the app and watch ESPN. Horn Frogs trying to break a dry spell here. Parrish going to pull up from short range and hit. You know, Brandon Parrish is such a good three-point shooter that oftentimes I think he doesn't go to his mid-range game enough. So Parrish with six points. He's the leading scorer right now for TCU. Williams and Shepard both have four. This one left short, and Bronzianski with the board. Vladimir Brodzianski also has to be a factor yeah. offensively Boy, today. He got that rebound. I thought that's the first time you've called his name. He's really good rolling to the basket down the middle, but see West Virginia rotating over and taking that away. Jump ball going to be called, and possession ball, right now points to the white. Boy, that is six turnovers for Jalen Fisher. You know, it's just hard to prepare for it. You watch teams practice, and a lot of times coaches will put seven, eight guys out on the floor just to get you used to the how hectic it's going to be. And well, Jalen Fisher has struggled here in the first 14 minutes of this game. Well, Jalen Fisher, when he was coming out of high school, was the highest-rated ESPN recruit to ever 
go to ever. TCU. Uh, he has a chance to be the face of the program. You think about what TJ Ford did for Rick Barnes at Texas, and it gives Jamie Dixon uh, automatic, immediate credibility, especially in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Adrian goes to the jump hook, left it a little short. Right, there is Ahmad for the board. Well, he gets off his feet so quickly. Oh, he does. He just seems to have a great nose for the ball. Now it's Robinson trying to test that defense again. And that one's going to roll in. And Alex Robinson has a free throw coming up. Alex Robinson almost held up. And then he looks over his shoulder and decides to take it all the way through. But watch him as he goes to traffic. He slows down and he thinks about pulling it back out, turns the corner and attacks. Alex Robinson, a player that almost went to pit to play for Jamie Dixon. Coach Dixon knew about him when he came here. Ended up at Texas A&M, though, and transferred to TCU. Well, kind of a cool story. Alex Robinson's mom was at TCU at the same time that Jamie Dixon was, and so they had an existing friendship, and she called him up and said he's looking for a place to go. And Jamie Dixon, will be honest with you, he goes, he's a whole lot better than I thought. He's really, really good, and he's been a pleasant surprise to this new TCU coaching staff. Ahmad, hard to the goal. He does that Golly. so well. He's got that explosive first step. Well, we saw him hit a shot at that exact same spot on the floor, so you got to close out on him. Man, he is showing us a lot here in the first half. That ball comes off, and Adrian right now is everywhere for West Virginia. Just took that ball out of Brodzianski's hands. Mountaineers. Slow it up. For the moment, Adrian will dial one up. Rebounded by Parrish. A little bit of a quick shot. Nathan Adrian's only made nine three-pointers all season long. Williams runner. Just a bit off. Adrian right now, three points, four rebounds, but doing a lot of the little things, especially his pressure on Jalen Fisher. It's been a big factor in this game. Ahmad just kind of got lost in the air, and luckily for him, the ball tipped out by a horn frog. He's uh, Ahmad. We've seen him make baskets with down on the right block. We've seen him knock down jump shots. We've seen him pick up offensive rebounds. And a dribble drive and a tremendous first half for Issa Ahmad. You know, he did not score the entire second half in that Texas Tech game. I think the Mountaineers really missed him late. Seven point game, four minutes to play here in the first half. Another traveling. And this one's going to be on Williams. So a seven point game. TCU getting tons of pressure here in Morgantown. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the City Double Cash Car. All right, Mr. Matt Schick, thank you so much. 30 to 23 here in Morgantown. West Virginia so tough here at home, averaging 83 points per game, but so far. As Dino said, it has been that pressure making the difference. Well, for the season, they have forced more turnovers than opponents have made field goals. And Javon Carter right now has forced Bain and his teammates into 11 turnovers. Horn Frogs have only made nine field goals. And keep in mind, too, West Virginia, they have gone over 104 times this year. They can put up some points. On average, they force a turnover one out of every three possessions here in the first half. It has been one out of every two possessions. 57% turnover ratio right now for the Horn Frogs. That's remarkable. Seven to shoot. Good pass. The throwdown by Kanate. Oh, what a great pass that time by Tariq Phillip. Lead up to nine. Nearly a steal there. It'll stay with TCU. 16 points off turnovers for the Mountaineers. I think for TCU, Reed, these next few minutes are critical before the half. Uh, you know, to have this many turnovers and still be in striking distance, if you're a glass half full kind of guy, there's reason for optimism. But boy, the last six or seven minutes, TCU really struggled. Javon Carter, tremendous defensive player. 
All Big 12 in that category. Yeah, two years in a row. That Carter's the guy when you ask Coach Huggins, who are you most pleased with? Loves the play of Javon Carter. He's first in the Big 12 in steals, third in the NCAA, and well, he is the heart and soul of this team. Robinson couldn't get that one to go. There's Javon Carter. Academic all Big 12 as well. His first team last year, but you know, he's been really consistent. He only averages 10 points per game, but he has been in double figures 11 of the 14 games. So it's not like he scores 21 game and then four the next game. Been very, very consistent on the offensive end. West Virginia doing a better job penetrating the free throw line extended against this 2-3 zone. Here's a three-pointer on the way, and this one goes down. So that's Lamont West stepping out, the redshirt freshman. Boy, everybody's standing looking at Michael Williams, and he's stuck. He needs to go help him. Largest lead for the Mountaineers, it's 12. Williams stops at the elbow. Five seconds to shoot. Horn Frog's got to get it off. Payne will fire. Well, great defensive possession by West Virginia. 16 to 5 run. West from the free throw line. And we got a foul on the floor. It's be a foul on Bain down inside, but. West just hit a three-pointer, and so that time he caught the ball. ball Defense one. closed out, out of control. Easy scoring option. Well, West has looked really good here early in this season. Lamont West, six foot eight freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio. Now, Lamont, now, Lamont West, one of those big-time shot makers for the Mountaineers. You know, averages seven points per game, but averaging 10 points per game in the two Big 12 contests they've had so far. Ganate misses the front end of a one and one. Now Jalen Fisher back in the game for TCU, nearly <laughs> fell to the floor. Look, he, he, it almost looks like a car wreck happening, and just nothing's easy. And so if you're Jalen Fisher right now, you need to take a deep breath. You need to quit over penetrating. Use a reverse dribble. Pull back out of the pressure. Quit thinking that you've got all of this on your own. Rely on your teammates. Pass that ball out of double teams. Throw it over the top and you know, quit trying so hard. Definitely on the job training here this afternoon for Jalen Fisher. One of the top freshman point guards in the country. There you go. Lane wide open, and he That's drops right through it. See how much more poise he had that time in composure. He backed up. He took his time, and much better possession by Jalen Fisher. You talked about a car wreck. That was like cruising right down the highway. <laughs> Left wide open by the Mountaineers. Ten-point game. Ooh, that was a travel. Kanate off balance, and official right there to call the foul. Well, you see Jamie oh, Fisher at the top of your screen a second ago just stalking the sideline and thought that West Virginia got away with a travel and then Kanate bailed out. So foul on Shepard, his second. As Sagaba Kanate, the freshman looking for more minutes and he is going to get more minutes. Seems like every time he is in the game, something good happens. He had 12 against Oklahoma State, and just one of those hustle players that does everything. Yeah, 12 points in 13 minutes. I mean, a point a minute, and you're exactly right. The ball just seems to find him only, you know, modest numbers for the season, five points, three rebounds, but you're right. He is going to get better and better every time he steps on the court. It's not easy to play, too, and put up numbers when you're coming in and out of the game, but this freshman has adjusted well. If you're playing for Bob Huggins, if you struggle with that, that's a you issue because that's not going to change. So you get in, you play as hard as you can for three or four minutes, and then go sit down and catch your breath. Did you deal with that well as a player? Y yeah. <laughs> No, you know, nobody deals with that well. But but if, if you buy into it and you realize that if you're taken out, you're going to be put back in, then you buy into the system and the role. And as long as you have that trust, then you know, it's easier to accept. Free throws coming up for TCU.
Desmond Bain at the free throw line. This is a kid that was a scoring machine in high school, 30 points per game. And he reminds you a lot of, you think about Iowa State's Devontae Burton or, or Baylor's Ish Wainwright. Wainwright. You see the big, strong shoulders. And well, I'm telling you, this kid is going to have a really nice career in Fort Worth. And he chose TCU over Northwestern, Texas Tech, Purdue, and Rutgers. Had a pretty good selection. Well, just, you know, we talk so much about TCU turnovers. Maybe haven't pointed out the fact just three turnovers in the first half for the Mountaineers. That's certainly taking care of it. Another foul underneath going to be on Chris Washburn, the senior. Another one of those freedom of movement. You see Washburn with his palms up, and he just chucked the cutter. And now freedom of movement, you just can't do that anymore. See the official talking about a forearm chucking him as he cut through the middle. Brandon Watkins, free throw line for the Mountaineers. So here's Brandon Watkins at the line. Watkins, a player, battled injuries throughout his West Virginia career. Free throw comes out, Bain with the board, and TCU would be very beneficial if they could go into the locker room, trailing only by single digits. Williams, tough baseline jumper, left short, and we're going to have another foul as Washburn stuck his hand in. And Washburn, two fouls in about 10 seconds. And watch the replay. It's a good call. Washburn comes in and yeah, just runs right through him. Well, down 11, you made a great point. Would have been a terrific opportunity for TCU to get this down within 10. And as a result of a bad play by Washburn, it's going to potentially to have a negative momentum going into the locker room for the Horn Frogs. Eleven points for Amon, and tonight at eight o'clock Eastern on ESPN, we'll be in Chapel Hill for an ACC in-state rivalry game between NC State and 14th-ranked North Carolina at the Dean Dome. Also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. I haven't heard the latest, but Theo Pinson, I think, might play tonight, coming off that broken foot. Lead up to 13 for West Virginia. Robinson, the lane open once again. And we're going to have another foul as he tried to attack. Now, certainly the best TCU has done against the pressure in the last four or five minutes. Very poised that time attacking for Jamie Dixon's team. The line for TCU, Robinson, two shots. Uh, two more for Robinson. Alex Robinson had 18 points in that win over Oklahoma. That win over Oklahoma. I know the Sooners aren't what they've been in years past. Still very important for TCU. Yeah, you're talking about a program that's only won eight Big 12 games in four years. So any Big 12 win is huge for TCU. Parrish. So a timeout on the floor. Checks in for TCU thinking that if they can somehow get a win today, Start to get some mentions for top 25 consideration. It's been a long week for West Virginia, though. This Texas Tech game went into overtime. Uh, a huge game by Tariq Phillip, knocking down three. Nathan Adrian hit a big shot to put it into overtime. Livingston, this three goes down, and that would be the difference. Mountaineers come back. Carter can't hit it, the buzzer. And start the celebration for the Red Raiders. A signature win for Chris Beard and his Texas Tech Red Raiders. And well, they got their hands full. They go straight from West Virginia into Lawrence, Kansas. Coach Huggins and the Mountaineers got back into Morgantown at 5.30 a.m. on Wednesday morning. Took the entire day off and started getting ready for this one. No direct flights either from Luggett. Lubbock to Morgantown. I do not find that surprising. <laughs> Another three from West. Good hustle. Adrian keeps it alive. Miles going to try and get it off at the horn. 
crowd would have gone crazy if that had gone down. But it was a one-point game with nine and a half minutes left. West Virginia extending that lead to 11, led by Mr. Ahmad with 12 points. Daxter Miles following it up with 11. 39-28 at the half here in Morgantown. Let's send it to our studios now with Matt Schick and Tino Gaudio. Welcome back to Morgantown, West Virginia. Drew Felius, Reed Geddes. First half stats, TCU and West Virginia with the Mountaineers leading by 11. What number stayed out, Reed? Uh, you look at rebounds or even, shooting percentage is about even. What jumps out at you? Plus 16 point differential and points off turnovers. And that was the story of the first half. Jalen Fisher, TCU point guard, struggling a bit, handling the pressure from the Mountaineers. Five points, but five turnovers and no assists on the afternoon. A good opportunity for Jamie Dixon and his staff to get in the ear of his freshman in the locker room and say, take a deep breath, come out, and let's start all over again. That shot blocked as Robinson was drifting back. Rodzianski tracked it down. Here's Fisher. Just two points in the first half for Brodzianski needs to be involved. Long shot for three to start the second half for Jalen Fisher with the shot clock winding down. Well, on the positive side, Jalen Fisher hasn't missed a shot yet. Perfect three for three from the floor. Good ball movement. Couldn't hit the three, though. As Carter missed the shot, and again, it's Adrian getting on the deck, but he threw it away. Two best offensive rebounders. There's Brodzianski running the floor. I was about to say, two best offensive rebounders in the conference this year in this game. Nathan, Adrian, and Kenrich Williams. Finally, the big man from Slovakia able to cash in. He's got four points. Well, he's got a chance. He's got the ability to go off. Had 28 points the other night at home against Kansas. Now it's Watkins. Carter, another three. A little bit off and an opportunity for yeah. TCU now to get back into this game. A surprise with the first couple of shots out of the locker room by West Virginia. Bob Huggins may be saying the same thing right now. J.D. Miller now handling it for the Horn Frogs. Nobody coming to him, so you see him kill his dribble, and people are standing around. And well, when you're in trouble, you've got to make yourself a receiver, present yourself. Jamie Dixon say somebody flash to him and give him an option to get rid of the ball. Yeah, breaking a press is certainly a team. A team, that's right. You see a teammate in trouble, flash. Don't stand there and go. Oh, looks like he's in trouble. Here's Fisher, tough pass, but found its way in Brodzianski's hands. I don't think that's who he was throwing it to. I think he was trying to go to the left corner, and that ball was just deflected straight to Vladimir Brodzianski. A 7-0 run by TCU, and it's a four-point game. It was an 11-point game at halftime. Ahmad inside. Can't finish. Second try is up and good, though. And there's Watkins. Adrian. Yes, he play hard. I mean, he just plays as hard as he can possibly play. Like his hair's on fire. A little bit of a throwback, isn't he? He is. His 118th game here today. Most experienced. Mountaineer on the roster. Lead is six for West Virginia. Defense! 
Horn Frogs still attacking and still scoring. They have come out of the locker room firing. Here's Williams with the deuce. Well, and let's brag on Jalen Fisher. I've been critical of him, how he's handled the pressure. That time he dribbled across, he kept his head up and just made the easy pass. And the easiest pass in basketball is always the best pass. Now from the elbow. Good cut. Not very fluid right now offensively, but Dexter Miles Jr. gets it to go off the glass. A really nice back cut that time by Dexter Miles. Adrian <laughs> forces another one. It is just amazing what he continues to do. So it's West Virginia ball underneath. Jamie Dixon's squad went about seven minutes without a turnover, but that was a bad one. An easy hoop by Miles Jr. Miles Jr. now with 15 points. Just kind of hit on that inbound. Williams now handling. Harris takes a step back, and now Robinson will set things up. Wide open in the corner. This is Williams for three. And out of bounds was Brandon Parrish, so it'll be Mountaineer basketball. Let's watch that baseline out of bounds play and watch Daxter Miles just kind of hiding behind the screen. And boy, great job of setting up the cut. Acted like Alex Robinson thought he was coming over the top of the screen, just rejected it, and a nice read by Daxter Miles. I love these guards for the Mountaineers. This play so hard. Miles again. He is feeling it this yeah, he afternoon. Is. He's just making it look really easy. You see Alex Robinson looking over there and he's holding his palms up like, man, I, I'm guarding him as good as I can. 17 now for the junior from Baltimore. TCU continues to inbound the ball in the corner of the court and they're putting themselves in trouble every time. TCU trip the lead, but West Virginia still feasting. Ten point lead for West Virginia. And this afternoon, Daxter Miles Jr., the junior, putting it on his shoulders. Now 17 points for Daxter Miles. And we've seen him score a lot of different ways off the dribble. We've seen him crash the offensive boards. He's been good on his back cuts. He's done a nice job on out of bounds plays. And seven for 12. And Daxter Miles is having himself a basketball game. Came in shooting 47% from three-point land. Two for five today from that territory. Pretty good body of work. So he's got 17, Ahmad. Also having a solid outing with 12 of his own. Kanate with six for West Virginia. And this is, you, you, you see, Daxter Miles sitting over there on the bench, and that's the way Bob Huggins substitutes. He doesn't take people out because they've made a mistake. Usually it's to get them a breather, and it's almost like hockey. You know, a, a whole new line comes in. How about the home run pass for Williams, who takes it to the rim? A nice play out of the timeout. Bob Huggins not happy with that. Is that the best way to attack a man-to-man -man press, though? Yeah, if you got all ten people down in the backcourt, you absolutely throw it over the top. Ahmad wants it, left it short that time. TCU with another opportunity to cut into the lead. Now some of the little Fisher over here and Kenrich Williams just standing with their arms up and they need to flash to the middle of the paint. Adrian another steal and off the glass from Javon Carter. But just when TCU thinks they're going to get back into this game and maybe pull even, West Virginia just hits you. Nathan Adrian sees his team lose a lead, gets down to three, and all of a sudden Bob Huggins dials up more pressure, and, man, it goes from three back up to ten in the blink of an eye. 22 points off turnovers for the Mountaineers here today. Uh, TCU. The turnovers forced West Virginia with nine more, and the points off. What a differential that is. 
And that is a huge number to try to overcome, an 18-point differential for Jamie Dixon's Horn Frogs. Last NCAA tournament for TCU was 1998. Coach Dixon trying to get the Horn Frogs back. And before that 1998 appearance, before that it was 1987 when Jamie Dixon was playing for the Horn Frogs. Two shots coming up here. Now watch this play right here. You see where these players are both standing here and nobody flashing to the basket. And when you do that, you end up with a trap. Like guys just standing there holding their hands up. And what that does is you take yourself out of the play. And especially when there's a double team on the opposite side of the floor. Back in for the Horn Vladimir Brodzianski back in. Yeah, Shepard goes to the bench. Robinson's got six. So a nine point game. They were just under 15 minutes to play. TCU back in that 2 3 zone. Tariq Phillip back in the game for West Virginia. He was made, making things happen in the first half. That pass gets away, though. And now the Horn Frogs with numbers. Robinson had it blocked as he tried to go to the rim. West Virginia can counter with an Ahmad flush. Well, a missed opportunity that time for TCU. They had numbers, did not convert, and then gave up a dunk on the other end. It's one of those plays, four-point yeah, swing. That's right. And maybe more than that, a momentum change as well. Kicked out now. Williams can't hit the three. Horn Frog's a little shaken after that last sequence. And now a foul as Robinson was on the far end. Let's take a look at that last sequence. A rare turnover by West Virginia. Alex Robinson attacking the basket, but look at the missed opportunity and an easy run out for West Virginia down on the other end. Tell you what, you watch Ahmad play. He's a big man, but he's got guard skills. Yeah, he really does. Six foot eight inch, but man, we've seen all of it. We've seen him penetrate, shoot jump shots. We've seen him post up. And I'd like to see him post up a little bit more, get the ball, get touches down there in the post. Yep. Coach Huggins says that Ahmad still learning how to play that perimeter game here at the college level. Bronzianski gets the roll. I believe that's the first time we've seen Bronzianski set an on-the-ball screen and roll to his sweet spot right there in the middle of the lane. Horn Frogs hanging around. Good. Great look. Ahmad, underneath. A uh, really good execution. Credit Nathan Adrian that time with cutting in and sealing off the middle of that defense in the 2 3 zone. Oh, boy, that looked like a trap. Bain doesn't get called for it. It's an easy put back for Brodzianski. Watching the middle of the paint, how many people jam Brodzianski? Robinson, the spin move, trying to get it to Bain. And now it's Fisher. Bain, the left hand. Yeah, really nice play by TCU that time off schedule and good job staying with it. And watch in the middle of the lane, watch Brodzianski, watch how many West Virginia guys jam into him. Carter inside, and from the elbow, there's Watkins ringing it up. Well, running a little triangle there down on the baseline right now, West Virginia, really effective against that zone. Lead back to nine. Williams going to take it inside. Brodzianski will be fouled by Brandon Watkins. Brandon Watkins calls the first one. As the first. West Virginia, number five in the country in assists per game, number one in the Big 12. And, well, you watch them execute on the half court. And, you know, what an unselfish team. West Virginia sharing the ball.
Nine point game here in Morgantown. TCU trying to hang with West Virginia late. Tonight at 8 Eastern on ESPN, we'll be in Chapel Hill for an ACC in state rivalry. NC State and 14th ranked North Carolina from the Dean Dome. Justin Jackson leading the Tar Heels. And if you're NC State, Dennis Smith Jr. They have found something. Look at the production over the last six games. Yeah, don't let that junior make you think that's classification. This is a freshman along with Josh Jackson at Kansas on the short list as the best freshman in the country. 22 points per game. Man, Dennis Smith has been outstanding. Uh, two shots coming up for Vladimir Brodzianski. Sophomore from Slovakia, six foot eleven. His offense has really come on over the past few weeks, but they want his defense and his rebounding to match that. Well, two points in the first half, ten points here in the second half, just twelve, just eight minutes into it. Now the Horn Frogs with some pressure. Miles Jr. has been the hot hand for West Virginia. Can't hit that time. And now Alex Robinson will attack. Numbers once again. Can't finish, though. Brodzianski kicks it out. Another three on the way. And Williams able to knock down the tray. It's a four-point game. Well, Michael Williams just his sixth three-point field goal made of the season. Yeah, Brodzianski hustling down, getting that offensive rebound and kicking it out to Michael Williams. Well, TCU just kind of hangs around, don't they? Yeah, they have withstood several big-time runs from the Mountaineers. Here's a long one. Doesn't go down. Ahmad has position. Taken back out by Miles Jr. Maybe about four feet longer than it needed to be. It's the third time this half the lead has been cut to four. TCU trying to get a stop here. Knocked away. It looked like Williams had that long ball, but he passed it up, Reed. Good ball movement. Open is Robinson for three. And TCU came out of the locker room, almost a completely different team than we saw them as they went in. And Great job moving the ball on the perimeter. 8 nothing run for the Horned Frogs. And Jamie Dixon's like, ability to beat West Virginia when he was at Pittsburgh. You can tell it's rubbing off a little bit on TCU as Watkins puts it down. Well, I believe West Virginia has scored every time they've gotten the ball to the high post against this zone. And certainly the sweet spot for the Mountaineers. Good pass. Bain was open. He scores, and they'll send him to the line. You know, that was a dangerous pass. Kenrich Williams did not turn and square his body up. He kind of threw it across his body, but nice job of taking it all the way through and taking advantage of numbers. Watch this pass up at the top of your screen. Thought he was in trouble. And see how he never really turned and looked, but you see Brodzianski down there and end up with a two-on-one. Bain the line the so now Desmond Bain goes to the line, just a freshman, six foot five out of Richmond, Indiana. Six games in double figures for Bain. He can score. It's good news for TCU, and it's the first tie since it was 11-11 early in this game. Now, 11 turnovers in the first half for TCU, just two here in the second half, and. West Virginia is struggling a little bit taking care of the ball against this zone. There's a look at the half production by the Horn Frogs, already with more field goals than in the first half. Well, nice adjustments by Jamie Dixon and his staff at halftime, and players doing a better job with this pressure. But again, West Virginia is one of those teams that you think you have beaten the pressure, and boy, can come back, and Bob Huggins' team can go on a run four or five possessions in a row. To the rim. Miles Jr. has been the man here today. He's got 19 points. Inside of 10 minutes in Morgantown. Good block. West Virginia turning up the heat. 
Garter passes it out. Tariq, the great look inside. Kanate with the finish. Yes, that's the problem. Suddenly you think, oh, we've got this pressure beaten. And well, they turn around and they come at you. What a great up fake by Kanate. Good passing. We've seen good passing by West Virginia the whole game. But look at this ball movement. And Kanate, watch this terrific up fake. Boy, he gets three horn frogs to take one up fake. And, yeah, that was strong. Love the enthusiasm by Kanate. Came to the United States right before his junior year in high school as he has adjusted so well to this great game of basketball in the United States. Over the top again by TCU. Bain was tripped up, and they're going to get a foul on Nathan Adrian. Crowd not going to like that. <laughs> Now that's twice that all 10 players have been down in the backcourt and TCU has just thrown it over the top and watch again and see if he oh he tripped on his own feet yeah they have a right to be booing that that time Desmond Bain tripped over the three-point line a break for the Horn Frogs eight is five and stepped on the line that time Robinson couldn't control it now, that's Kenrich Williams' fault. That's not Robinson's fault. He, Kenrich Williams is like panicked to get rid of the ball. There was no pressure on him, no reason at all. And he looked really uncomfortable with no pressure on him. So now Jalen Fisher checks in for probably the most important stretch he's yeah. been on the floor on all season. Yeah, I agree with that. Played well here in the second half. How will he play down the stretch? Inside to Adrian. Back to the bucket on Brodzianski. Goes to the hook. Couldn't hit it off the glass. And we got a foul over the back. Let's see who they got that on. I think they called it on Nathan Adrian. Second. Ball The second foul on the senior. There were a lot of bodies flying in for that rebound. And now on the penalty, Bronzianski will have free throws. First of five, six games rather today on ESPNU as the big one, Clemson, Alabama, looms in the distance on Monday night. Bronzianski is really making himself a factor here in the second half and has been a very good free throw shooter, 78% from the line for the season. I don't know whether I'm more impressed with the way TCU hangs around or West Virginia's ability to exert themselves and kick it out to 8, 9, 10 points. But boy, we have seen back and forth in this second half. Now, very well played effort-wise by both teams. Long ball by Miles Jr. Way off underneath. The follow is no good, but Adrian there to fight for it. Trying to sneak one through to Kanate. Bain scrambling, and West Virginia will keep it somehow. Kanate was open before that, and Nathan Adrian with a great rebound, just so much pressure he couldn't find him, and the pass was just late getting over there. So the shot clock does reset to 30 seconds. Carter pass one up. Phillip tried to pull up. And we got another whistle on the inside as Kanate was trying to get position. Got a good one here in Morgantown. 62 59, West Virginia by three. Sixty-two to fifty-nine here in Morgantown, West Virginia over TCU. Drew Felios, Reed Geddes. This is the first of six games on the docket. Clemson and Notre Dame coming up next on the U, and then four more all the way up until San Diego and Boise State tonight. But a win for TCU here would get them closer to that top twenty-five ranking. Right now they're twelve and two. And Reed, Jamie Dixon talked about how much that ranking would mean to their fans. Remember, they were ranked briefly 
couple years ago. Didn't last long there. But for a program trying to win again, a ranking means a lot, doesn't it? Really candid response, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of coaches will go, oh, it doesn't mean anything. Jamie Dixon goes, yeah, it don't mean a lot. It's credibility. It's important for the fans, for the kids, for recruits. And he goes, that's, a, that's absolutely a goal. And we're fighting to get into that top 25. Refreshingly candid response. It's going to be a battle here in the final eight minutes. Boy, a win against West Virginia on the road would go a long way in that direction. Free throw line. Kanate turns and faces. Phillip winds up with it. And Fisher's going to get the long rebound. Jalen Fisher, zero assists, five turnovers in the first half. Well, there's a turnover as I was about to brag on him. His first turnover in the second half. Garner lays it in for the Mountaineers. I was just about to say he's done such a better job with the pressure. And he's got four assists and one turnover now in the second half. That was a bad one. Well, Fisher's played much better here, and so is Brodzianski. But right now, the Mountaineers with a five-point lead. It's time now for this building out to basketball moment. Sixty four fifty nine West Virginia over TCU Jalen Fisher the freshman tested here today. Yeah, that's his sixth the turnover and has done a much better job but that's now 24 points off turnovers for Javon Carter and his teammates. Bill Fisher has played better in the second half than he much has better. in the first yeah, and so is Brodzianski too. He has really upped his offensive production. Well two points in the first half and Brodzianski has got 12 in the second half and now, West Virginia, that is just an enormous number. 32 points off turnovers per game. One out of every three possessions results in a turnover forced by West Virginia. So the Mountaineers clearly did not play their best basketball at Texas Tech on Tuesday, trying to come back, get a win here over TCU, a program they've never lost to. The Horned Frogs have been pretty stubborn. Home run ball again to Bain. Ooh. Blocked by Kanate, and that'll get the crowd going. Nice hustle back by Kanate. Now Miles, three-pointer on the way. No good. It's Carter with the shot that time. West Virginia has missed their last nine three-point attempts. Robinson, a little out of control in the lane as Miles Jr. commits the foul. Well, you talk about the struggles of Daxter Miles and his teammates behind the line in the last four or five minutes. If I'm Bob Huggins, boy, I stand up and say, hey, look, you can take a three, but not until that ball goes inside first. Robinson, free throw line, one end, the ball. So here's Robinson again at the line. 
Five oh. of seven today, make it six of eight. How about that one? Tell me he did not bank that in. And <laughs> surprising, just shoots 55%. So if you're Alex Robinson, boy, there was a there was a glaring area in his game that needs to improve his free throw shooting. He's been really good. I mean, he has done so many good things for Jamie Dixon. Jamie's been surprised, but boy, your shooting guard's got to shoot better than 55% from the free throw line. Lead trimmed to three once again. Miles Jr. Trying to work that free throw line for the Mountaineers. Get it inside to Watkins, then it goes out. Phillip, penetration. A little too strong, and Robinson comes away with it for TCU. Lost it again, though. To the rack, and a foul. Going to be called as Tariq Phillip attacked the rim. Watch how many white shirts Alex Robinson tries to dribble by. Watch this. Boy, it's unbelievable. He goes by. Look at this. One, two, three. There's a fourth one that comes up here. And look, he's still dribbling the ball on him. Eventually, you can't dribble through four guys. you got to pick up the ball, jump stop, and pass it ahead. First free throw off by Phillip. Senior out of Brooklyn. At the free throw line as a team, this is where West Virginia needs to improve only 64% on the season. Mm, equal criticism, Tariq Phillip also shooting just 55% from the free throw line. Jalen Fisher handling for TCU. Got Phillip all over him. Extra pass, Williams, and now five seconds to shoot. Robinson sizing things up, will take the shot. Too strong, and the Mountaineer is going to come away with it as Miles Jr. ran it down. Yeah, really nice defense on the half court that time by West Virginia. Well, if I'm the Mountaineers, they're, they're going back to that triangle set. You jam into the center and turn around and try to play three on two down there inside. See Big 12 action later on in the ESPN family of networks. Carter takes the three and buries it. Almost seems like when the Mountaineers need to make a play, Reed, they make that play. And a lot of times it's Javon Carter doing that. Ooh, nice. A little circus nice shot by Bain. Desmond Bain. It's a little bit like James Harden going to the basket. Crowd quieted momentarily. Inside of five minutes now. So if you are TCU, here in the last five minutes, what do you especially need to do to pull out the upset? Now you got to take care of the ball, but right now, the way West Virginia is heated up, Javon Carter, you're going to have to get out there and push them out another step. Carter getting hot at just the right time. He's got 10 points for the Mountaineers, and the lead up to eight. Fisher. Radzianski trying to track it down. Now Williams. He'll get it to go, and the three-point play opportunity coming up. Yeah, but how about Brodzianski? I, I mean, he has been, he was a complete non-factor in the first half, and he's been a huge factor in the second half. And look at the big fella hustling with Nathan Adrian, two guys going hard after a loose ball. Is it safe to say, Reed, win or lose, TCU, a team that is 9-65 and in Big 12 play, they're definitely going to be a different team yeah, no this question. year. Yeah, you know, we talked about that the other night when they were playing Kansas, that if you're in a habit of looking at your schedule and you go, oh, TCU win, TCU win, you better rethink that because they are not an automatic win. This is a good team, and oh, my gosh, Javon Carter just absolutely lost a wide-open layup. Carter had everything working. Couple three-pointers. Six-point lead for the Mountaineers. It's time to meet your U.S. Cellular Features Bank. If you want to see it, ESPN's All right, thank you, Matt. Here in Morgantown, 71-65 as all of a sudden the junior Javon Carter has started to heat up.
Uh, we talked about Brodzianski wasn't a factor in the first half, has been in the second half. Same could be said for Javon Carter and did not make a shot in the first half. And second half has been a completely different story for the six foot two inch junior out of Illinois. Four for seven, two consecutive three point field goals made. Tell you what, he's a junior in college, but when you look at him, looks a little older than that, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Well, you watch, you watch him play, and he plays older than that, too. He is a tremendously talented kid. And does not make a lot of bad plays. No, Inside of four minutes now, TCU able to hang around. But who is going to step up here in the final minutes for the Horned Frogs? Robinson almost lost it. Now it's Williams from the corner. The ball stuck that time, needed to swing. Fisher, the leaner. I don't think that's the shot they wanted. Those are the situations where West Virginia is going to have the edge a little bit more experienced than TCU. Here's Ahmad. He's been a little quiet lately. Couldn't hit that time. Scramble for it underneath, and it belongs to the Mountaineers, and who is in the middle of yeah, it again? I'm telling you, every single time Nathan Adrian is around that ball, he's diving, he's tipping, he's smacking, and, well, you talk about effort, and Nathan Adrian just plays so stinking hard. And he's only got three points. Doesn't light up the stat sheet. As this one goes down, and Carter is red hot here in the final minutes. It's Daxter Miles in the first half and Javon Carter in the second. I'm so impressed with Nathan Adrian and the way he impacts the game just by playing hard. Williams cut down before he tried to elevate. Carter, why not? Can't hit that time, but the follow-up is good. And right now, it is all working as Zagaba Kanate tips it in. And everybody at the WVU Coliseum is on their feet. Uh, Kanate blocking a shot at the rim on one end, hustling down and tipping it in on the other end. Talking about the hustle of Adrian. He's got nine rebounds to go with those three points. And looks like we have a technical foul called during that last little sequence on Jamie Dixon, TCU head coach. I think he was complaining about that non-call. And Kanate, you can jump in the restricted arc. You get the principle of verticality. You've got this vertical cylinder. You can now leave your feet and try to block it. What Jamie Dixon thinks is that there was a roof that Kanate came down and brought his arms down outside of his vertical cylinder. And We'll take a look at it. I don't think this is what he's mad about. I think it was down on the other end on the block shot. I like that change in the rule. I like to allow big guys to go up and try to block shots, even if they're in the restricted arc, as long as they go straight up. And Jamie Dixon was complaining that he did not go straight up. So Nathan Adrian going to take the free throws. He's 76% from the line. And only his fourth point along with his nine rebounds I'm surprised he's only had one career double double and Nathan Adrian's one of those guys you think he's a walking a double double had one earlier this year this is a kid that could go get you 10 and 10 every night well to be a championship team in your conference or to make a deep run in March got to have role players like yeah, that that's right Adrian will be very, very efficient down the stretch. Another turnover. Mountaineers attacking. Miles Jr. dialing another one up. Oh, that may have been a dagger right there. 15-point game. And this one slowly getting away from the Horn Frogs. Alex Robinson thought that ball was kicked. He was trying to dribble between three guys, and well, he looked at the official and was He's kicking his foot. I'm on a 16 to 4 run for West Virginia. You know, you talk about the cumulative effect, and that's what happens. You know, it's just relentless, and all of a sudden you look up and you're at a minus 12 differential in a run the last Robinson two minutes, and boy, you just dig yourself a hole. It's the 10th free throw here this afternoon for Alex Robinson. 
coming off a really good game against Oklahoma. 18 points, six assists, been so consistent. 14 games this year with over five assists. Eric checks in for TCU. Josh Parrish, rather Brandon Parrish, checks in for the Horn Frogs, sending Desmond Bain to the bench. And now 13-point game with two minutes to play. Ahmad, the alley-oop to Kanate. Oh, yeah. Well, that defense almost looked like it was going in without any help from Kanate. Near travel by Parrish. Robinson, the three. And a quick timeout by the Horn Frogs. Big man to big man on the alley-oop. Yeah, boy, you get your bigs passing this way. And Kanate, he just scores points, doesn't he? I mean, he gets into the game and just has such an impact on both ends of the floor. But really good pass from Misa Ahmad. Well, the NFL playoffs start with a wild card game on ESPN and ABC Saturday. And that's today, a little bit later, 420 Eastern time. The 12 and 4 Oakland Raiders taking on the 9 and 7 AFC South champion Houston Texans from NRG Stadium. This guy a little familiar to West Virginia fans. Bruce Irvin just had a fabulous year. Now he's going to have to wreak havoc again in this game. The Oakland Raiders, it's kind of a game of attrition just so many guys out and i'm looking forward to that football game so i gotta ask you reed monday night on espn national championship alabama clemson who do you like alabama but i tell you what i can't wait to watch <laughs> that game i'm really i can't remember last time last year i was excited about it but man it exceeded expectations and i just i cannot wait for that one I'm thinking maybe this is Clemson's year. Dabo yeah. Sweeney last year came close. This year, a little bit more season. I think they're ready. Fascinating storylines. You know, to change offensive coordinators the week before the national mm. championship game. Wow. Yeah, that doesn't work uh, out that often. Got to have some serious intestinal fortitude to make that move. Crimson Tide will be tested for sure. It'll be fun Monday night. 12-point game here. Minute 20 seconds to play. Javon Carter handling. He has been outstanding over the past few minutes. 13 huge points for West Virginia. Adrian going to take the three as it comes off right of the hands of Miles Jr. He can't hit, but there's Kanate fighting for it. He traveled though. Yeah, but a good offensive rebound. Kanate had no idea they called the travel. He's flexing and didn't even know the officials had called traveling. <laughs> Yeah, he, he gets the flex. You know, he's been really strong in this game. So if you're TCU, well, are you thinking well, just three here, of course? Yeah, you, you know, you got to score points and then look for somebody to foul. And there's a lot of guys on the floor to foul. Javon Carter is not one of them, but there are some candidates. Williams was open. Off the fingertips of Adrian will stay with the Horn Frogs. Daxter Miles is out there, and he's a 52% shooter from the line. Javon Carter, 78. Nathan Adrian's, 76. Robinson juggled it. And we're going to have another foul here as Robinson went to the rack. And this could be an a, offensive foul. Yeah, it was. It's going to be on Robinson. Oh, I didn't see that with his off arm. He isn't arguing very hard. So the Mountaineers getting set to improve to 13 and 2 and 2 and 1 in the Big 12. Took them a while to put away the Horn Frogs. Now, I don't know that West Virginia needed to bounce back from the Texas Tech game, but well, they've come out and they played very, very hard. Just a typical West Virginia game, really, from the get-go. Fisher with the shot clock and the game clock winding down. And that'll do it for Morgantown, 82-70.
As Bob Huggins and Jamie Dixon embrace, this was a great basketball yeah, game. Yeah, really good game. TCU did a lot of good things. Bob Huggins has got got to be pleased with the way his team played. Javon Carter, Daxter Miles, outstanding game. Final score, 82 to 70. For Reed Geddes and our crew, I'm Drew Felios, saying so long. Full day of basketball coming up here on ESPNU. For a recap of today's game, visit WBUSports.com.